All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Adam Callanan, who is in Montana. How are you doing, Adam? I'm doing great, John. Good to talk to you. Yeah, and Adam is the founder at Pentane, a SaaS platform that shows $1 million plus brands how to pull the right levers and operate profitably. Previously, Adam was co-founder and CEO at Bottlekeeper, a consumer brand that grew from zero to eight million in sales in just three years without employees or investors. It's quite an achievement. I mean, it, 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 getting to eight million in revenue in three years alone, but without investors or employees. And this was inquired in 2021, an eight-figure company with just four employees. And what we're going to talk about today is showing early stage companies how to operate profitably. And I guess, Adam, that's one of the big challenges, especially with early stage companies and especially with the mantra that was certainly pervasive a few years ago. And that's like growth, 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 growth at all yeah. costs. Don't worry about the bottom. Don't worry about the bottom line. Don't worry about the expense side. Just grow. And uh and you know, it worked for some people, but for for a lot of people, that gets them into trouble very, very quickly. So, what, is, especially given where we are now, what is what is the advice you would give to an early stage company right now? I, I mean, frankly, it's the same advice that I would have given to an early stage company three years ago, and cash was floating around like it was free. Um, and that is the common mistake that. We see at Pentane, and I've I've seen in the early stage startup world that I've operated in for the last twenty years, is that expenses and things inside of a business, namely payroll. Um, I fully appreciate that I took a very extreme stance on that with Bottlekeeper and trying to operate with no employees for the entire duration of the business. Mm -hmm. But payroll and office and all these things that we have a tendency to add on to a business, and the, the typical story is this: mm -hmm. you know, up founder operator has an idea starts generating revenue, starts having, you know, sort of air quote success. Mm -hmm. And that we think that that's going to last for forever. And some, you know, it never does obviously, but right. like, that's just the mentality. So we, we think that we need to gear up for this thing to continue on this epic trajectory. And we gear up by solving problems with payroll, meaning that we have problems inside the business and we hire people to solve them yeah. instead of looking at technology and a lot of other avenues to do that much more efficiently. We go and we open an office, but it's not an office that we would fit in today. It's an office that we can grow into in the next year or two or five or whatever that is. Um, and then, you know, in the, in the case of the free money train that, that happened in the COVID world, and you know, this is like cyclical, right? I mean, this happens every sure. 10 years. Um, you also think that it, you know, all you need to do is hit this next milestone and you'll be able to go and raise at three X or 10 X or whatever your valuation. And, like the money is going to be unlimited and that is not the case anymore. Yeah. So it's, it's just, we have to maintain control of the fixed expenses inside the business in order to give the company and the revenue systems inside the company, the remote possibility of, of getting and remaining in the, the profitable territory. Yeah, I, one of the things you said there, it's just very interesting because I do think it's a it's a common trap that uh, companies fall into and that's scaling by people. And every time, as you said, every time you identify, oh, there's something else or there's something I need to get off my plate or whatever, we tend to put it together into a job description and hire somebody to do it instead of, as you say, is looking at are there tools that can do this? Can I contract this out? Do I even need a full time employee for all of those things? But we tend to be so focused on pushing the business forward that you scale by people. And then you end up with if the company does grow and you end up with those unwieldy middle management layers. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, and in, in that early stage of business, the reality is we go and add the people without having any understanding of how the business needs to respond to pay for those people, mm -hmm. how the revenue is going to need to increase, how, and if you're using ad spend to drive the revenue, how much more ad spend are you going to need to drive at what return on ad spend in order to create what amount of revenue? And then, I mean, you know, there's a bunch of hidden metrics inside that that are really important, like contribution margin, which I know is a scary word. We call them happy dollars because they are the happy dollars inside of the business. They are the answer to most questions. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have a any insight into those that data, those important 
KPIs, not the number of employee KPI, but like the actual things that are running the business, you're literally just operating completely in the dark. And you're going to find out in a month or two when you get your PL that it didn't work. A no, exactly. place to be. Yeah, no, exactly. And, 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 and you probably see this with the businesses that you work with. Sometimes it's like hire somebody for a job and then realize that it's not a full-time job. Therefore find other things for them to do. So now you have hired somebody who is good at one thing. They're only doing a part-time, but they're doing a bunch of other stuff that they're not really good at or interested in. So, um, you know, you're actually getting the worst of both worlds. It really is. And you, all you've done is taken, to your point, you've taken something that they're good at and diluted it across four positions to effectively fill time, which is just a, you know, it's it's a great way to employ a lot of people and it's a terrible way to spend company resources. So what are some of the other um, hidden expenses? Because one, one thing we used to talk about a, a number of years back was uh, when we are talking about margin was um, the silent killers, right? I used to always ask people, What's the what's the biggest destroyer of houses in the U.S. every year? And people go uh, fire. You go no. You go oh flooding or tornadoes. No, it's actually termites. And uh, and the thing about termites is you don't notice them. You don't see them until your house falls down. And it's a bit like that sometimes in your business. You don't notice all of these hidden little expenses, or uh, or your say you're in a service business, you're bringing in resources to help you, but you're not accounting for those resources. You're not accounting for the time that's going into, you're convincing yourself this is profitable when it's really not. So what, what are some of those things that you come across those kind of hidden killers? I mean, in, killer? you know, in a, in a brand, in a consumer facing brand, or even in a B2B facing brand, a lot of them are software you get in, you know, you get in these free software traps where you try something for a week or a month or whatever. And it, kicks in and triggers some active payment thing and you clearly haven't been using it. Mm -hmm. And a year later, you know, and I'm not suggesting this is like the responsible thing to do, but I was guilty of this repeatedly at Bottle Keeper. A year later, you realize you're still paying for this thing that you don't, you didn't log into three times and it, you know, you spent $1,200 and it's like $1,200 over the course of a $10 million business is not a lot. But when you have 37 of those, like that does the math adds up really fast. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the, the big problem that that we just continuously see, and, and frankly, where Pentane comes from, it came from my experience building and operating a consumer brand that was extremely efficient. We were able to do that because it was profitable. We were mm -hmm. able to reinvest the net profit out of the business, the operating cash back into the business to grow, which is how it grew like that. But we were only able to do that because we had a really, really, really clear understanding of the underlying math and the financials in the business. So we knew how to pull the levers. We knew how to spend ad dollars. We knew the amount of revenue we needed to drive. We had all this information. So Pentane comes from that is a software tool, software platform for early stage sub $20 million businesses to help answer and clarify those questions. Because I appreciate that the math is complicated. It's hard to get to that. But if you can start making decisions with data, with real-time data in the right. business, largely around how you acquire customers and how you spend on fixed expenses and whatnot. Again, whether it's whether it's payroll, I'm not saying you should never hire anybody. I mean, yeah, I take an extreme position on that. And I'm really, my favorite KPI is revenue per employee. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that we should track. And as you add people, how does that number change? Are they adding to the revenue or, or are they frankly taking from it? Um, but you really need to have clarity into how you add any type of expense to the business how your customer acquisition channels need to respond in order to pay for that expense and meet your goals, whether that's just get to break even or it's to generate a 10% net margin or a 20 or whatever that, that is for you. But it, it's hard to get to that when you're at a super early stage. Yeah. And and what's interesting there, and I mean, I say this is uh, obviously we're a technology company with with Pipeline or CRM, but I totally agree with you. I think sometimes, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's become you know, a bigger problem now, because let's face it, it's so easy to grab another SaaS solution off the, just sign up online, do your free trial or whatever. Uh, I think uh, it really does behoove organizations to take that step back and say, yeah, I mean, these are good things that we should test out, but we should really establish what is our core tech stack? What are the core elements that we need? And and start from there and make sure that you've optimized those and you've got the right ones before just starting to willy nilly add tools. Because now with AI, I mean, you know, let's face yeah. it. I mean, we're we're picking up a new AI tool today and we're ditching it for another one next week. 
hundred percent. Yeah, they were we're at the very very beginning of that massive you know additional add on tech stack. And again, like team members, there's an important place for software platforms and CRMs and all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. I just it, it's one of those things you know, especially as you get bigger and they get more expensive. Yeah. Um, obviously, you tend to pay more attention to the ones that are more expensive, but it's just one of the things that we see. We, we sit down with a you know, a new company that were coming in that that at the stage we are and being very hands on with going through their P and L, and we start understanding really quickly. They start understanding because it it gets brought to their attention in a way that they've never understood how much weight these things add to the business and how much harder it makes it for them to get to profitability. Mm -hmm. And and the other part too, Adam, I think this is something that. Uh... Unfortunately, people still don't understand innately when they start into a business is the difference between generating revenue and generating cash, right? Totally. And the fact is that you you could have a you could have a business and we could have a great month, a ton of sales, but we have nothing in the bank account because we're net thirty days, or we're selling to big organizations who think, "Oh, you're just a little person. I'm going to pay you in sixty days, and there's nothing you can do about it." <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's a huge, definitely a problem that that we had for the first at Bottle Keeper. That is the for the first four years of the business, you know, part of not having team members was we we put on really strict guardrails at the beginning of the company, and that was coming from my company before that, which had eighty people in multiple states mm -hmm. and was kind of a nightmare to manage. I vowed to not do that again, and the guardrail we put in place was that we wanted to build a scalable business that could operate on technology that didn't need employees. And the result of that is we said no to retail distribution for four, the first four years of the business. And we had a lot of interest in mm -hmm. it. And I just knew that we weren't going to be able to go and do that effectively unless we hired a person to do it. And we were not going to hire a person. Right. The The outcome, though, is that when we went to retail, we had a massive wait list. We had a lot of demand. So we in the first year of retail operations, we went from zero to 5,000 stores in the U.S. Right. Um, so that was so we got to experience firsthand then what getting into like the account receivable cycles and trying to, you know, get get into managing cash flow and that that is a whole whole other science in itself. Yeah, and unfortunately, one that can often uh, you know bite people because they haven't built enough runway or they've overestimated you know the how quickly things can things can kick in. So what is it? Um, what are some other things as as the company starts to grow? What are some other things that uh, that you should look at to make sure that you you know you don't get out of whack on your expenses? Yeah, I mean, one of them actually we have a tendency to see is an underused expense, as in, and that is advertising. Mm. What happens is, I mean, this is the story. The company, you know, they're they're trying to grow. They don't understand the math and the underlying financials in the business. And again, that's okay. It's really complicated. So I don't, it's hard, mm -hmm. but the result is that they, they don't, they can't create ad budgets based on anything that is other than emotion or gut feel or luck of guessing. So th the outcome from that is that the business, for example, I'm kind of making these numbers up, needs to generate sure. $5 million per year in order to even have the chance of getting to break even. And that's just based on the expense structures inside the business. And the, you know, the, the CEO or the head of marketing, whoever's responsible for this says, goes to a marketing agency and says, we are going to spend $500,000 per year on advertising. Here's your $500,000 budget. We need, it needs to generate $5 million per year. And the marketing agency is like, okay. I mean, that's a 10 times return on ad spend. Yeah. That is, completely unrealistic in 99.9% .9 of circumstances. Mm -hmm. But that, and that budget was completely arbitrarily made up. There was no, that's just what they threw some stuff at the wall and came up with. And, and the reality is they need to be doing $10 million in revenue at, you know, $3 million in ad budget, which gets them down to a realistic return on ad spend. But, it, but the fact that they don't, again, they can't like figure out the underlying math means that nobody was set up for success. The marketing agency could not be successful. The business itself had zero possibility of being successful. So that, that is one area and we've seen and have a, had, had a bunch of clients that have come through that come, you know, they get into Pentane and the system tells them the amount of ad, they, ad dollars they need to spend over whatever period of time and achieve a realistic return on ad spend to drive the amount of revenue to get to break even. 
Um, and, and we, I mean, our cons that system is constantly right. telling people that they're, they're spending a third of what they need to be spending. Yeah. And I feel like that's one of the biggest challenges, uh, that faces people because number one is advertising. It's, I mean, it has a number of different, um, results to it, obviously, but, sure. um, I, I think, uh, you, you know, people think, oh, yeah, get my business up. I'll get onto Google Ads right now. I'll dump a little bit of money in there and everything is going to be cool and things are going to start flowing through, which, as you say, they don't. And and I think people under I think part of it is people underestimate how much money you do actually need to spend on advertising in order to get to get the return, you know, especially especially nowadays. And that can be daunting. It absolutely can. I mean, you know, we. We were in the the heyday of paid media. I mean, Bottle Keeper got launched when Facebook launched their video ad platform. Mm -hmm. We were right at the beginning of that. And that was a big part of that massive trajectory. And that game, I mean, it literally year after year from that point forward, it was like a boa constrictor on the neck of the business that mm -hmm. just tightened and tightened and tightened. And it's not going to get looser. So, you know, do, doing acquisition via partnerships and other much more organic means of customer acquisition is super, super important. Lifetime value, LTV is super, mm -hmm. it's always important, but it's now more important than ever because that acquisition cost now needs to stretch a lot further than it used to. Yep. Um, and and then using, you know, I'm also not saying you should ever use paid media, like using that to add fuel to the fire, I think is is a brilliant strategy, but building the entirety of the business around it is is a very, very dangerous game today. No, no, abs absolutely. And obviously with the changing algorithms and everything like that constantly is it's a, it's a challenge to keep up with it. And then what are some what are some more, um, you would say, just enduring issues that companies face like that they would have faced like 20, 30, 50 years ago that they still face today? Well, I mean, to, to you know, kind of beat a dead horse here. One is not understanding the math inside the business, really not understanding how the company makes money. This mm -hmm. all came after we bottle keeper got acquired and I took some time and I consulted a couple of businesses that we had, my wife and I had invested in. One of them was a $20 million business. It was very profitable. And I got kind of under the hood of the car and they had, again, had no idea how the business actually made money. They knew that they had revenue and they knew that they had expenses. And at the end of the year, revenue minus expenses met net profit. And mm -hmm. although that's true, it's significantly more complicated than that. Um, so I think understanding, at least getting a basis of understanding, you don't need to know all the math. That's the point of our system is simplifies a lot of very complex concepts to tell you what to do and how to pull the levers to get to profitability. Um, I think multi-channel now is, is more important. I mean, it's continuing to get more important than ever. You know, two years ago, everybody thought retail was dead. That proves to not be the case. Mm -hmm. Building direct to consumer as a brand is, you know, is incredibly important, particularly if you can do it organically. And then being able to leverage that across into retail is a pretty beautiful, beautiful situation. But I just, I don't like the cycles of building businesses on pure fundraising and that, you know, a lot of, a handful of people have made a lot of money, you yep. know, raising a zillion dollars and blowing that up. And 99.99999% of the other ones have imploded. No, absolutely. So I, I think business fundamentals, take it to basic, op operate profitably as quickly as you can. Yeah, and and I think that's I think that's really good advice. And I think anybody you know running a business or starting a business or whatever, you know, getting that financial acumen, as you say, you don't need to understand. You know, you don't need to become an accountant, but I mean, to certainly yeah. be able to understand the numbers and to be able to see how, you know, A minus B, you know, where you get to C, and understand all the components therein are are, are really in are really important uh, really important. And I just, I just like that. I think that's a great takeaway for people is that investing that little bit of time. There used to be this great book called, what is it, financial, from a, like financial accounting for non-financial people or something yeah. like that. I can't remember. I read it. I, first time I owned a P&L, I read that book, you know. Um, uh, but I think it's such a critical, it's such such a critical piece. It really is. I mean, you can still be the, the creative and the, you know, CEO visionary. But having just a base level understanding of how to, you know, how to read a PL and and just literally you need to understand three things: fixed expenses, variable mm -hmm. expenses, and then the simple equation of contribution margin. Mm -hmm. Your revenue minus your sorry, contribution margin. I'm sorry, revenue minus variable expenses equals contribution margin. And your net profit 
is equal to your contribution margin minus your fixed expenses. Mm -hmm. Like that is the only important equation in the whole thing because you can either decrease fixed expenses or increase contribution margin, both of which will directly impact your net profit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, um, Adam, this has been fascinating. All of Adam's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Pantene. Yeah, you can find spending a lot of time on LinkedIn. Pentane is is a profitability platform that comes out of my decade of experience building a a, a really lean, profitable e-commerce business. And and then I'm at a, a stage of wanting to share that experience with as many people as possible. So you can find us at pentane.com or find me on LinkedIn. Excellent. And like I said, all of uh, all of Adam's information will be below this video. So thanks again, Adam. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thanks, John.